Let's explore solutions to the time-dependent Schrodinger equation for psi of x and t. Um, so this is a partial differential equation. And so one of the techniques we use to solve partial differential equations is the technique of separation of variables. And so what we're going to write is capital psi of x and t is equal to lowercase psi of x times t of t. If we insert that into our time-dependent Schrodinger's equation, uh, we get something that looks like this, i h bar t dot over t, minus h bar squared over 2m, psi double prime over psi plus v, where psi prime is a derivative with respect to x, and a dot is a derivative with respect to time. So in separation variables, we say that these quantities must be equal to a separation constant, and we're going to call that e, and that leads to two ordinary differential equations i h bar t dot over t is equal to e, and minus h bar squared over 2m psi double prime over psi plus v of x is equal to e. So let's move forward in uh, looking at these equations. So multiplying both sides by t, we can write the t equation in this way. Multiplying both sides by psi, we can write this as minus h bar squared over 2m, second derivative of psi plus v psi is equal to e psi. The t equation is straightforward enough to solve. We can solve that using usual techniques of ordinary differential equations. So it's e to the minus i e t over h bar. The x equation is the one that you've probably noticed is the time independent Schrodinger equation. This is usually the one that you end up seeing for the Schrodinger equation. And it says that if you're given v of x, uh, there are many solutions, psi n of x to this equation, and each of those solutions has a corresponding separation constant E, or energy E, corresponding to them. Okay, so putting these two together, the total solution to the time-dependent Schrodinger's equation, take the form capital Psi is equal to little Psi sub N of X, whatever that is, uh, E to the minus I E sub N T over H bar. Or we can write this more generally because each of the little psi sub n's is a solution. A sum of them are all solutions. So we can write this as an arbitrary sum with coefficient c sub n, psi sub n, e to the minus i, e n, t over h bar. So let's look at an example to make this more concrete. Let's say the potential is 0 inside the region 0 and L. Uh, this is what you would normally call a particle in a box. Uh, and then uh, let's just say it's infinite outside of that, so it's bounded inside of 0 and L. The time independent Schrodinger's equation then becomes minus h bar squared over 2m, second derivative with respect to x of psi is equal to e psi, since v is equal to 0. Uh, you can check that solutions to this ordinary differential equation, and you can see a later video from for more derivations of this. Our psi sub n is a sine of n pi over l x, and the energies that correspond to that are e sub n's are h bar squared n squared pi squared over 2m l squared. Again, at this point, you could just check that or see the later video for the derivation. So that tells us that the total wave function, capital psi, is now the sum, sum from n equal to 1 to infinity, c sub n, times sine of n pi x over l e to the minus i e n t over h bar, where e n is this expression that we had here. So how do we find these coefficients, the c sub n's um, for our wave function? Well, we'll, again, we'll talk about that later when we talk about the particle in a box, um, but we're going to get that from the initial conditions. So if you specify the wave function at t equal to zero, as some, some say, box. Let's say it's uh, non-zero only in this particular region between zero and L. Then we would set t equal to zero in our expression for capital Psi. So it becomes a sum Cn sine of n pi x over L. And we would then use the Fourier trick to find the C sub n's uh, for the psi of x comma zero that we were given. Again, we're going to talk about this a bit later. 
What I want to talk about now, though, is the idea of stationary states. So let's say you only have one particular n value for your size of n. So in particular, let's say it's a pure n equal to 5 state. So capital Psi is just Psi sub 5, e to the minus i, e5 t over h bar. So let, now let's look at the probability density. That's capital Psi squared, capital Psi absolute value squared. So that's Psi 5 star, and then the exponential with a positive sign, Psi 5, and then the exponential with the negative sign. The exponentials cancel, and so this is just Psi 5 star, Psi 5, or the absolute value squared of Psi 5. Notice that this is actually now independent of time. We only have x dependence. In general, then, we say that a stationary state is a state where there's only one Psi sub n of x. Note that this is not true if you have, say, a mixture of different psi sub n's in your total wave function. So in particular, as an example, let's consider capital psi is a mixture of 2 sine of pi x over l, e to the i, e sub 1 t over h bar, and then 3 sine of 2 pi x over l, e to the minus i e sub 2 t over h bar. So I have the n equal to 1 and an n equal to 2 state here. Then the probability density, absolute value of capital psi squared, uh, is, well, I take psi star, and so I put a plus sign up in the exponentials. And then I multiply that by my original psi, all of which have minus signs up in the exponentials. And then I'm going to multiply these two terms, distributing terms through. There's a bit of algebra. I'm going to write one of the uh, closer final steps. So I get 4 sine squared of pi x over l, 9 sine squared of 2 pi x over l. And then I get a term that mixes the n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 states. And for that, I get an e to the i e2 minus e1 t over h bar plus e to the minus of that. If you stare at that, you'll notice that that is a 2 cosine of e2 minus e1 over h bar t by Euler's formula. And so I could write this in a slightly more compact form as my time independent terms for n equal to 1 and n equal to 2, and then a time dependent term, which involves a multiplication of the wave function for n equal to 1 and n equal to 2, times a cosine e2 minus e1 over h bar t. And so this is the probability density, capital Psi, absolute value squared. Notice that these terms here are time independent. So these are the usual stationary parts that I would have had, but I have time dependence in this third term. Uh, and usually we interpret that as an interference term between the n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 states. We also sometimes call it sloshing of the wave function with time, because the wave function won't be constant with time. It'll oscillate back and forth. 